Zombies, the bloodthirsty undead. When they arrive, will you survive? Using scientifically accurate zombie analogs, we put your favorite weapons, objects, and mods to the test in order to separate fact from zombie fiction. Zombie go boom, kick on dead ass. Hey, what's up, survivors? Welcome to another mind-blowing episode from Zombie Go Boom. I'm Chuck Murray. I'm Charles Fultz. And this is our Christmas episode. It's Home Alone themed. Now, you guys have been asking us to do a Home Alone themed episode for a really long time, and Vsauce just did it. So we decided to do our very own. If you want to check out the original Vsauce video, link is in the description below. But we're going to be doing one of their tests, which was the paint can to the face and we're also going to be doing a couple of tests that Vsauce did not do. Iron to the head and brick to the head. It's going to be a lot of fun. You ready? I'm always ready. Let's get started. All right, up first we've got the gallon of paint. It weighs about 11.3 pounds. I'm going to be swinging it from atop this rickety ladder here. In the movie you see the paint can uh, hit the guy in the front of the face as he goes up the stairs. So we're going to replicate that and see what happens. God, that was awful. That was such a bad idea. <laughs> I'm gonna have to clean all of that. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> the oh. All right, so possibly a broken nose, possible concussion, but the frontal bone is still intact. The frontal bone is made specifically to take that kind of damage. The thing that was actually warped or destroyed because of the kinetic force was this paint can and the warping actually caused the top to shoot out and the paint to go all over the place which is similar to the results they got in the Vsauce test. What isn't similar is our analog. Ballistic gelatin heads are not as good as what we currently make. We know because we've used ballistic gelatin heads. They're bouncy, they're too thick, it melts, it rots, it doesn't give you a controlled experiment because the density is always a little bit different. Our heads are as close as you can possibly get. And from our test, what I've come to the conclusion of is that you have a cylindrical surface striking a spherical surface. So deflection is going to happen. It's just going to happen. The can hit square and then just kind of rotated and moved to the other side of the target, which means not all of that kinetic energy is actually being transferred into the skull. Another thing is that this particular weapon is a wide surface area, so a lot of the kinetic energy is also being dissipated across the entirety of that particular surface area. And speaking of ballistic gelatin, what you saw in the Vsauce test is that the head went back enough so that the gelatin itself just kind of ripped apart. Now, that is what happens with ballistic gelatin, but that is not what happens with real human flesh or skin. So I think we got more accurate results with our test. And another thing that they didn't actually take into account in the Vsauce episode is that after the bandit got hit in the face with this paint can, he also fell a half of that huge flight of stairs into the ground. And perhaps that 
would have injured him even more than the paint to the face. All right, next is iron to the head. Alright, so James checked out the damage below and it seems that nothing really happened, at least nothing you can easily see. Which means that you could definitely, again, potentially get a concussion, you could get knocked out, but it's probably not gonna kill you. For something that could definitely kill you, we're gonna try something that's not a trap. Kevin just gets fed up and instead of throwing a camera, throws a brick at one of the bandits from a five-story building and it hits him again on the forehead because these bandits have a tendency to look up when they have stuff thrown at them. So we, we're not on top of a five-story building. So what we're going to do is we're just going to chunk the brick as hard as we can at the head below and that should give us a pretty similar result to what would actually happen in real life. Are you ready, Charles? I'm always ready. You got the brick? I got the brick. Let's do this! Yeah! So we tried this a few times. Some of them hit the frontal bone orbit area and it actually, you know, basically ripped deep into the skin layer, but it did not have enough power to get through the bone. You can see that here with the frontal bone, the frontal bone stopped it. And then uh, finally though, we didn't hit the frontal bone. We hit the parietal bone, but we hit it perfectly like a corner of the brick hit that parietal bone and all of that kinetic energy was transferred directly into <laughs> the target so it totally caved that in there's uh there's a cut right there and i can feel that the bone itself has been launched into the cranial cavity so it's not just the brick that is causing all of that brain damage it's also the skull pieces that are now inside of that cavity just to show you what I mean there you go so parietal bone crushed and that right there is is the actual cranial cavity so yeah that's a kill so you may not be able to do that every time or maybe you just need a little practice this is the first time that Charles has ever thrown a brick at something human ish and ever right ever done that before I no I've never thrown a brick before never in my life <laughs> do you think do you think uh, you'd get better with practice for sure yeah, so that's that's the issue here. How much practice does Kevin have throwing bricks at people? Um, and that's another thing that we found out. It doesn't matter if it's the paint can, the iron, or the brick. You 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 got to do it right. You got to be accurate. Otherwise, it's just not gonna work. You know. <sighs> we gotta finish this guy off. What do you suppose we use? I suppose we use a Christmas bat. Let's make it. All right, to finish off this head, we've got this baseball bat and these Christmas lights, and we're gonna wrap them around this bat and make ourselves a Christmas bat. Let's do it.
All right, since the Home Alone traps were a little lackluster, we decided to finish this episode by adding more luster to the testing by making this badass Christmas bat. We definitely know this is gonna work. All right, so we finally got the Tim head to blossom out thanks to the powerful awesomeness of the Christmas bat. I hope you enjoyed that. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned that Kevin is not necessarily a murderer unless he's really good with a brick. Now, the guys at Vsauce made a really kick-ass video on this subject. Check it out in the description below. But we feel that what they failed to take into account when they were trying to figure out the math on how many kilonewtons would be transferred to their human target, they didn't think about the fact that the can has a large, broad surface area, so a lot of the energy is dissipated there. And then also, it's not a solid object, so when it hits, the human target, a lot of the energy goes back into the can and completely distorts it. Basically, the can gives way well before the skull does. So it's not a kill, probably. Uh, the most dangerous part about it is actually the fall after you get hit in the head, especially if you're knocked out. Could it kill you? Hypothetically, maybe. Probably not. But, you know, it would not feel good at all. In fact, the iron to the head wouldn't feel good either. But the problem is modern irons aren't as heavy as the irons that were actually made of iron back in the day. So there's not a lot of mass, so that energy wasn't transferred as much as you would like. So also not a kill shot brick. Yeah. yeah. Christmas bat? Definitely. For sure. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that video. Have a Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays, whatever it is that you celebrate. I hope it's happy and awesome. And with another mind-blowing episode from Zombie Go Boom, I'm Chuck Murray. I'm Charles Fultz. And we will see you next time. <laughs>